guest tonight is the communications chief for the largest employer in the world. Guess who it is? That's right, the U.S. military. She is an influential change agent who believes in empowering others by coaching and sharing information. And ladies and gentlemen, she is in our fireside chat right now. Nikki. Hi, how are how you? How are you doing? Nice to finally meet you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, how are you? How is everything going? Are you safe and out of the storm? Yes, I can say that in South Kakalaki, it's pretty warm out here. Well, not really. It's warmer considering what's going on in Texas and other places. Okay, South Kakalaki. <laughs> okay, all right. What, what part of South Kakalaki are you? So I am stationed at Shaw Air Force Base, which is located in Sumter, South Carolina. Oh, I've been there <laughs> a time or two. <laughs> but I live in Columbia, South Carolina, which is a little bit closer to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Okay, got you, got yeah. you. Sumter, when is the last time I've been to Sumter? I saw well, one of your interviews where you mentioned that you've been to Sumter before. So you talked with someone who is from Sumter who lives in Columbia. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think that was um, Tabitha. Okay, Simmons. hey Tabitha. Yeah, Let's Tabitha Simmons. Numbers. <laughs> yeah, she lives in she lives down that way. Um, you know, Sumter is one of those places where you don't really plan to go. You just kind of, I guess, zoom through it, right? <laughs> Yeah, like Tabitha said in her interview, unless you're military or you're originally from Sumter, you usually don't come to Sumter. But um, it's a beautiful community. Um, people are very welcoming, and I am happy there at Shaw Air Force Base. Okay, look at you talking all military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my girly on right now. I got my hair down. Okay, you know, I, got I a see. Makeup on. Okay. All right. You you you're looking glamorous. I think Thank you're ready. You. Thank now, you. now somebody told me that you was extremely nervous. Why is that? <sighs> yeah. So I told a Adrian. Uh huh. A yes. I said I'm extremely nervous because this is my very first time being on a podcast. Like first time ever. First time ever. I mean, I'm I'm a little nervous here. I, uh, I do this for a living, though, which is crazy because I'm a communicator by trade. But being on the other end, like being in front of the camera, that's a little different. So now I'm kind of feeling what the people that I train are <laughs> feeling when they're in front of the camera. OK, so so it seems like we got to get your ass off the fence first before <gasps> we get anybody else off the fence. OK, yes. So let's start here. Let's start here. What are you afraid of? So I'm not afraid of anything. Mm. I don't operate in fear. Mm. It's just things that are unknown that, you know, stimulates my curiosity. Like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen next. Mm. And I'm feeling excitement. I'm feeling nervous. I'm <laughs> feeling all these different emotion, emotions. Uh -huh. But... It's for the good, right? For the <laughs> so, greater good, right? Right, right. It's nothing negative. That's okay. what I'm feeling right now. All right. So why don't we start from the beginning? So you was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was born by the river. Uh -oh, no, but really, but really, I was born by the ocean <laughs> in okay. Honolulu, Hawaii. I am, um, my mother is Filipino Hawaiian and my father is African American. I can so, see the Filipino Hawaiian yeah. in, your, in your eyebrows. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Well, they look good. Yeah, they look good. <laughs> I, I go by Blasian. Back in the day, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I used to go by Miss Blasian. Okay. <laughs> Miss Blasian. So that's but, the combination of the two, right? Yeah, Black and Asian. Yes. But I have grown beyond that. So, oh, you're a grown up, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> pushing 40 right now. Oh, and, and I'm somebody's grandma. Whoa, I yep. would never have known that. <laughs> somebody's grandmother. Whose grandma so, are you? 
I am Evelyn. My granddaughter's um, name is Evelyn. So okay. we call her Evie. Okay. All right. So let's let's jump into. I think you off the fence a little bit now. Okay. We, we got you. A little warmed up. Bring it down. Yeah, you got to. You know, okay. we got the oven on on two fifty right now. Okay. It's gonna heat up though. Okay, let's heat it up. I ain't oh. afraid of a little heat. I hope not, because it gets <laughs> hot in here. <laughs> it's hot in here. Bring it, Finch. Okay, so so we're talking about being a change agent. Now, most people might say, well, what is a change agent? Is that someone who changes, or is that somebody who changes into a superhero? What is a change agent? Well, a change agent is someone who leverages their their talents, their skills, their network to move mountains for people and organizations to make okay. things better for people. To make things better for people. Yes, yes. People who don't operate in fear, they speak up. Ah, a little speak up action. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so how does one become a change agent? Is that something someone has to go through like a college course or are you born a change agent? Well, I will say I've never been to a change management course to mm -hmm. certify as one, but there are opportunities out there where you can certify to become a change agent. But I became a change agent as a young girl, mm. you know, um, it started off with me being a teenage mother, you know, um, according to statistics, a teenage mom really doesn't succeed. Well, I want to change the narrative on that. Okay. I, I want it to, to be different. And, and one day I walked into um, your government assistance office uh -huh. and went to go pick up my WIC voucher and the way they talked to me, it, it just didn't feel good. Okay. And at that moment, I knew that there was more to life. I knew that I needed to do something different for my daughter. Mm. And so okay. that's where I decided to enlist in the, in the military. So, so would you say the military changed you to allow you to become a change agent for others? Absolutely. So, I always had all these ideas running through my head, but the mm. military instilled this sense of confidence, right? Okay. I, they put me in front of formations. They had me talking and briefing and teaching, and it caused me to, the more sets and reps you do of anything, you get a little bit more comfortable. So mm. I'm hoping that after this first podcast, <laughs> I'll, I'll be a little bit better the next podcast. But yeah, so the military provided me that confidence Okay. Speak up. Okay. Now, now, how important, and I guess I will start with that one, because you, you're talking about speaking up, which tells me that probably before you didn't see your voice as being valuable enough. Is that is that a true statement? That's true. That is true. Of course, I mean, you go through things and you're trying to figure out who you are as uh -huh. a preteen. I have a 12 year old who is right now going through that stage, trying to figure out who she is um, without being mommy's baby girl. Um, and so I didn't know the power of my voice. Mm. I didn't know the impact that I would make on people by speaking up. So let me tell you a little story. I'm a storyteller, right? So that's well, what I tell do in the your military. Story, Nikki. <laughs> so um, when I first joined the military, I spoke up all the time. Like I, I talked, you know, went against the grain, I guess leaders would say. Mm -hmm. I studied regulation, studied um, things that told me the rules. That's what the military, military calls regulation. And I remember going to my father and saying, dad, like, why am I having all these issues with these leaders? Like, what, what's going on? Like, what's my problem? Mm -hmm. And he said, now nah, I use sound effects now. Okay. So <laughs> he said, Nicole. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I wasn't ready. 
I okay. wasn't ready. So I need to run that back a little bit. No, run that stop. back again. You got to start it, Nicole. Okay. He said, <laughs> I said, Daddy, what's wrong with me? Why are they beefing with me all the time? He said, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> he said, those same characteristics you have as a junior soldier mm. are the exact characteristics that people are going to expect you to have when you become a leader. Oh. You must learn how to pick and choose your battles and know when the right time to speak up, you know? Okay. So, so I, I was working on that for a while. It took a, it was a struggle <laughs> because I've always been the type of person who spoke up about things that I was passionate about. Okay. So what are you passionate about? Ooh, don't get me started. Look. <laughs> <laughs> So I am super passionate about teenage motherhood. Okay. I was, I had my first child at the young age of 18 and the stigma was that I wasn't going to, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be right here right now speaking with mm. you, mm. right? I should be in town right now doing whatever, working at a wherever, but I had to change that. And thank God I had supportive family, supportive parents who took my daughter in and it took a sacrifice. You know, mm. I had to leave my child um, for basic training, okay. which is like eight, nine weeks. Don't get me talking. Yeah, I don't remember those numbers right off the rip because it's 20 years ago, <laughs> you know, but I went to basic training. That was like eight, nine weeks. Then I went to the technical training, which is another nine weeks. And guess what happened? 9-11 happened. Wow. So when I joined the military initially, like I didn't join a military that was in conflict at the time, you know? So going, joining the military during that time, it was rough. I went on deployment after deployment after deployment. Mm. And it was rough on my children, but I needed to change that narrative. I had to change that narrative. I had to provide more for my children. Mm -hmm. And that's what motivated me throughout. Okay. So in life, I don't like to see things as problems. I like to see them as hurdles. And I like to see that we as people are hurdlers, right? Yeah. So what are some of the hurdles you've had to hop over in your life outside of being a teenage mother that has gotten you along the point of you being who you are right now? Wow. I mean, I'm a mother first. So if we're not talking about me being a teenage mother, then we're talking about me being a professional and a mother at the same damn time. Okay. Okay. So being a professional, having to continue to compete with, with others, in a more, in a male dominant force, mm -hmm. you know, that was rough. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to wait for spring breaks and summer breaks and times where my parents were available to watch my children. I had to make those difficult decisions mm -hmm. um, when it came to my college education. You know, I remember going in class one time and bringing my, my daughter with me. I didn't have a babysitter. Thank God the instructor was open to allowing me to sit in class and, and with my daughter in the class. It took sacrifice, mm -hmm. but those are some of the things, the hurdles that I went through in my life is, is trying to be, trying to reach my goals, trying to pursue my dreams while being a mother. You know, a lot of women are told you know, they're giving the ultimatum, like you have to choose between being having your family and your mm -hmm. career. Why is that even a thing? You know, why, I don't, why I, is that a thing? I don't know why that's a thing, you know? Yeah. So my career, it's not that I'm choosing my career over my family. My career is something that I'm good at. It's my livelihood. It's what makes me feel good about myself. I see tangible things, tangible things right immediately. When I do something, I make an impact. Mm -hmm. Impact is extremely important to me. So 
that's what drove me and that's what made me stronger and motivated me, kept me motivated throughout my entire career. Okay. So, so, so we talk about a, a few hurdles. Now you gave me a half a hurdle. A half a hurdle. You Shoot, that felt a, like a whole hurdle. And you gave me a half a hurdle. Woo. I'm coming for the whole track. All the hurdles on your track. So, so you help people, or do you just help organizations and, and, and business professionals? People are my passion. Period. People, people are your passion. Period. What is it about people that drives you to go the extra mile to? help them become something that maybe they didn't think they could become. Oh, I just kind of put myself in, in their shoes. I've done a lot of self-inflicted things in my life, you know, and I've always wondered while going through those things, like, mm. why am I going through this? And, and I'll have elders and wise people tell me, you know, things come down through and out, right? So where you can inspire others. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that until later on in life, why I went through those things. And, and that's why I choose to be, you know, transparent about everything that I go through. I know you follow me on IG. Um, I follow you on Facebook. I don't know if you're following me on Facebook, but I tend to just tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. There are going to be moments where you're feeling down, you're feeling depressed. You don't feel like going, you mm. feel like quitting. And I want to tell people, like I want to show people that it's okay to feel those things, right? And right. so that's that's what drives me to, to people. Like I like seeing things, seeds being planted mm. and blossoming, you know? So, and, and people are that, when I invest my, I put seeds into it. I'm investing in them mm -hmm. and watching them grow. Gosh, that is so fulfilling to me. Okay. So, so what seeds have you planted now that you wish to see grow within your own life that haven't quite sprouted up yet? Ooh. Oh my gosh. I've planted so many seeds. Um, like accepting this offer to be on your show. Is one of them. That's one of the seeds you planted? It's one of the seeds. I was scared. Like, you know, I, I don't, when you look in the mirror, you're kind of like, you don't see what others see in you, mm. you know, sometimes. And when you, when you've been through so many things in your life, it's kind of like, wow, this guy is really hitting me up to be on their podcast. Like <laughs> I'm just, I'm just this person here. You know, that's where I see myself, mm -hmm. but I don't see what others see in me, but I have to operate in faith and not in fear. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, because you are somebody and I think you have a, a an awesome voice and when I think about change agent, that's someone who alters the, the trajectory of somebody's life or somebody's business or somebody's whatever. And it's never the same again. It's and not that, transformation. You're that, right. Exactly. And that's who you are. You know, you often encounter people, even as a young woman, uh, as a young girl, you, you never realize because it, it takes development. Hey, how am I this way? I don't know how I know the things I know. I know things nobody's ever taught me. And sometimes it feels a little bit scary because it's unknown. You know, Les Brown told me this story many moons ago oh, about I a love soldier. Les Brown. Great <laughs> guy, right? With Les Brown? <laughs> Les Brown. I remember the first time I met Les Brown and he showed me a, a, a check from an event he had just come from speaking at. Mm -hmm. The, the amount was ridiculous. I'm not going to repeat what the amount was, but it was ridiculous, right? But he told me this story about uh, a soldier trapped behind enemy lines or, or captured behind enemy lines, right? And so the, the captain comes out to the soldier and he says, hey, you have two choices. You can go before the firing range or you can choose this door. It was a door located uh, a little bit off from where the soldier stood. And the soldier said, well, what's behind that door? The, the, the captain said, the unknown, you know, 
Uh, and so he said, hey, don't worry about it right now. In the morning, I need an answer. The morning came, captain comes to the soldier. He says, so what is it going to be? Are you going to take the firing range or are you going to take this door? Well, the soldier chose the firing range. After the shots rang out, the secretary comes to the captain and says, captain, what's behind this door? He says, freedom. But very few mm. choose it because of the fear of the unknown. Yes. And I think for so many people in their lives, because they are not un they're unsure. And that's one of the reasons why we have the get your ass off the fence. Right. Because so many people are living in the gray area of uncertainty and they're unsure about what life is going to bring them. What, where is life going to take me? Uh, I'm unsure about myself, my voice, my looks, a host of things that they are unsure about. And so we aspire to get them off that fence so that they can live a life of abundance. And right. I think you are one of those people who, again, even as a young woman, even as a young guy, even now, probably sometimes you're still uncertain about a, a few things in your life. But you are someone who changes the trajectory of people's lives when you encounter them. And I want you to know your voice matters. So you don't have to be afraid to go on this show. This won't be the last show you go on. You're going to go <laughs> on many, many shows from this day forward. But you have to come ready to change people because you are a change agent. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's crazy that you bring that up because I am at the fork in the road right mm. now. Now, how would I know that? <laughs> and you follow me on IG. <laughs> I don't know that from IG. <laughs> really? I don't mm. know. So I'm at 20 years. I hit 20 years in the military on mm. March 6th of this year. And usually a soldier's full life term in the military is 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm at that point right now. The military has brought me so much safety and security. I mm -hmm. know the military. I, can, I know exactly what they think, how, what they want, what to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing this for 20 years. And now I'm at the point where I have to make a decision on whether to leave that safety net or to just go, you know, go into the civilian workforce. Mm. I know one thing for sure is that I want, I see myself going far. I just don't know how I'm getting there, how far I'm going to go. I just know that I want to go with no ceilings. And, and right now, I, I live that through the people within my organization. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm at 20 years, I keep on getting these brand new soldiers. I don't know why I keep on getting these brand new soldiers who are 19, 20 years old. And I get super excited all over again. Mm -hmm. And now I'm at the point in my career where I can, I'm a decision maker now. Mm -hmm. I'm at the level where I can make decisions, but I'm also at the stage in my career where I can leave and pursue my professional goals in the civilian workforce. So that's where I'm at right now. It's tough. Not tough. <laughs> Not tough at all. It's actually a, a little bit more simpler than you making it out to be. I know there's an emotional connection. There's an emotional connection to my organization. I've been a part of my family for 20 years. Mm. It's this a long time know. to know somebody, right? Right. This organization is what made me who I am. I mm. was there. I was always there, but it helped me to discover myself. I was going to say, it didn't make you who you right. are. Right. It yeah. helped me to discover who yeah. I am. It, helped it brought you. things out of me yeah. that I probably wouldn't have brought out. Who knows what would have happened? But I have so much love for the military. So much love for the military that now I'm like, crap, what do I do? Mm. Do, do, you, do you look at your life, how it would be if you'd had no military? Ooh, no, I, I mm. don't. Because right. I, I, I don't know exactly what would happen. I've always mm. had some drive about myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I come from Michael and Perla Glanton. Okay, not, not Perla. <laughs> Perla, and she will tell you you spell her name like a pearl. 
<laughs> right? Uh <-huh. laughs> but yeah, I come from them. And I was always taught that no matter what you do, no matter what you go through, your last name is Glanton, baby girl. And you better represent that name. Mm. So even when I was facing adversity, I remember that. I remember those words from my parents. My mom gave me a speech right before I came on here. She was like, Ki ala show no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's her speech, you know? So, I mean, I come from a really great supportive family. And I know that no matter which decision I make, that they will be there. And that's one, one thing my dad always taught me. He said, Nicole, <laughs> whenever you come to a fork in a road, you make the decision that benefits your family. So no matter which decision I make, it doesn't matter if it works or it doesn't work. In the end, at the end, if I'm taking care of my family, that's what it is. Oh, my mom said, hey! Is that <laughs> your said, mother? That's my mother! Poor Lana, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Your my mother, mother told you to come here and take no prisoners. Are you coming to take over the Fit Show? What? Mom, when I tell you my family shows up and shows up, out <laughs> shows up and shows out when i tell you my mother is my biggest cheerleader oh my gosh y'all gonna make me start crying uh -oh. i can't start crying on this show nope because i am a thug you're a thug <laughs> <laughs> nikki you ain't no thug i'm a thug i'm hard i'm le i'm a lethal soldier trained to kill you're a studio gangster <laughs> we say a dimpos train killer Dimpos <laughs> is a school that we go to to learn how to communicate. Okay, okay. All right, so so this fork in the road that you are on, okay, I'm going to help you get off the fence tonight. <sighs> okay. So, <clears throat> truth of the matter is, if you're being completely honest with yourself, your life has been with the military very comfortable, right, for you. Yes. Yeah. All right. It's giving you a great level of comfort. However, you aspire to do a little bit more beyond the scope of where you are now. You know, right. that's been your thing. And this is not a decision that you just come to overnight. You, you've been mulling over this for a while. You've been going back and forth, teetering on the on the edge. But you are afraid. Now, you said earlier, I'm not afraid of anything. That's not actually true. Is it Nikki? I'm not afraid. I know oh, that come whether on I'm no, I am not afraid. Don't get it twisted. Apprehension. Now, now I'm telling you my raw thoughts. Okay. I'm telling you the things that are going through my head, but best believe it, baby. I am not afraid of what's on the other side. Uh. I know that wherever I put my head into, mm. whatever I put my head into, I'm going to be successful because that's what's ingrained in me. I'm always going to give my best. That was my purpose of telling you my story about representing ah, Blanton, right? So no matter it. what the situation is, I'm always going to give my best. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm a, a person who likes to complete things, right? I, I'm the type of person when I start on a project at the end of the day, don't ask me to leave my desk because I like to finish things. I like to see things complete. Mm. You know, I like to put that check mark in that box. So that's what that is. You know, I've apprehension. Worked, right. I've met, I've worked so hard to get to where I'm at. And now I'm finally at the stage in my military career mm. where I have a seat at the table. I have a seat at the table. Nikki, do you take the seat or do you walk away? That's where I'm at. Never fear. Do you take the seat or do you build your own table? Or do you build it on? I, hey, I'm going to build my own stage, as you can see. I'm going to build my own stage. It, it doesn't require other people to give me that stage. I'm, I'm going to tell my story because I believe that in telling my story in real time, 
I'm inspiring others and I'm giving people courage. I'm instilling courage into people to, to be who they are freely. Yeah, you, you're a light to a lot of people. But a lot of people look up to you. A lot of people look to you, uh, not only just for advice but and, and insight, but you are one of those people because you have learned some things about yourself and your life and you found your voice a, a long time ago. You have a innate passion to help other people find their voices as well. So that's why a lot of people are, are, are a lot of people tend to clam to you because you are a magnet for people. So thank you. This next journey, this next chapter in your life won't be like the last 20 years of your life. They won't. Mm -mm. I, expect, I expect change and growth every single day of the week. I love it. I embrace that change. I embrace that growth. When you offered, when Adrian reached out to me to be on this show, there was no doubt in my mind. Yes, I would say yes to growth. I would say yes to doing something different. That's what I'm. I'm that's what I'm for. Like I'm. I'm okay with that. I've always been the girl who, in class, a teacher asks a question. I'm raising my hand. I don't care if my answer is wrong or not. Mm. I've always had the courage to be that person. That's good. So let's let's give people three either secrets or recipes to how they themselves can become a change agent. What would be secret or recipe number one for you? Have courage. Have courage. Now, that sounds simple to a lot of people, but let's say someone's sitting somewhere they're watching or they're listening to this and they say well how do i get that how do they get courage how do you get courage because you know people always tell us to have it but they never tell us where where we can get it from so right. someone that doesn't know who who doesn't feel courageous where would they where do you get your courage from i think i just think about the impact mm. i just think about if I don't say this, this will happen to these people. Mm. And so that's what brings the courage out of me. I've always been an advocate of the people. I've mm. always spoken up. And it's not because it benefits myself as an individual. It's because I'm thinking about the other people. That people energize me. People mm. are what... I guess, inspire me to be the change agent that I am. Okay. So courage is number one thing they have to have. What's number two? Be disciplined. Mm. You can be, I, I did a little video the other day and I talked about how, you know, I've gone to people and I've motivated others. People will hit me up on my inbox, hit me up on my cell phone and say, Nikki, you know, what should I do? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and you try your best to motivate them. But when you walk away in the end, it's their discipline that is going to bring that change. Mm. Right. So right. that's why why when you walk away, things just fall apart. You know, mm. if you don't if you're not committed to making that change and you don't have the discipline to keep on pushing past that comfort zone. Mm. You're not going to change. Definitely not going to change. Uh, and and I, I agree with you completely. Uh, building courage, but having the discipline to stick it through because there are going to yeah. be some times where you feel like giving up or not changing. We are we relish in comfort and we love being comfortable when it comes to things that we've uh, even bad habits we've uh, adopted and, and created over time period. And so coming out of that that comfort lounge that I call it and being somebody else or being the person that you was destined to be is oftentimes challenging for people to be. So discipline. What's number three? Woo. Having to narrow this down. Yeah, you gotta you gotta narrow it down. Oh my gosh. So we said have courage, mm -hmm. be disciplined, and wow, a third one. It's not the problem is not trying to find the words. It's trying to figure out which one of the many things that I that I use to to be a change agent. 
Um, wow. Did the fence I, just stump you tonight? Oh, yes. My no, it, I, I guess, um, I guess you just think about, I've already said that, like thinking about the people, you mm -hmm. know, um, that's what drives me to be a change agent. Um, um, being transparent. Your mama said focus. <laughs> focus, Nikki. Focus, Nikki. I guess I, one of my biggest things that I'm known for is being transparent. Yeah. Right? Is, yeah. is being transparent. I believe in telling your story in real time. Mm -hmm. People will say, I've heard several times, move in silence. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they say move in silence. But let me tell you, I've done a lot of things in my life that you would think that the things I've done would have ruined my life, would have costed my career, cost my life, cost mm. things. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen because what is meant for me mm -hmm. is for me. And so I tell people what I'm going through and what I'm thinking because I want them to know that even though they're having self-doubt or whether they're thinking, you know, things about themselves, like they're not capable of things or they're have they're facing depression or or they're they're pregnant as a teenager or their husband leaves them or their spouse leaves them and they are a single mother. You know, I just I just believe that if we tell people our story in real time and we're transparent, then that's just twice, the you know, twice a lot of accountability partners. Right. Like the other day, I, a couple of weeks ago, I posted something about um, me having um, I'm face. I was facing an issue and I'm telling you probably about like 200 folks got on there and was like, uh, Nikki G, I know you ain't. You better dang on pick your head up and you better walk. You better keep it going. Keep mm. it moving, you know. And so sometimes you need that. To people to remind you, I know your goals. I know you're destined for greatness. And so that's why I feel like being transparent is, is important. So be courageous, be disciplined, and be transparent. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just down. Like I have the radio on the telly. You're in the mix. Lord. All of them.